The AMSA is a comfortable, easily administered single-site injection that provides anesthesia for maxillary incisors, canines, premolars, and the related gingival tissues on the side of the injection without causing collateral anesthesia to the face and lips. Injection technique, AMSA, anterior, middle, superior, alveolar. Before you begin, verify the STA system is set to the STA mode. It is recommended that you use the 30 gauge half inch bonded STA wand handpiece for this injection. Please note it is critical to use the STA mode for this injection to ensure that a safe and controlled single flow rate is maintained throughout this injection. Delivering the anesthetic at a faster rate than the control flow rate can result in adverse tissue reactions and or tissue damage. Make certain the aspiration feature is on as an aspiration test may be performed during anesthetic delivery. The injection site for the AMSA is identified at a small area along an imaginary line which bisects the premolars and is midway between the free gingival margin and the mid-palatine suture. This landmark may vary somewhat depending upon the anatomy of the palatal vault of your patient. A more appropriate description of the point of needle insertion is a small area found to be bisecting the premolars at the junction of the horizontal and vertical components of the palate. Start by gently placing the bevel of the needle against the surface of the palate. This is achieved by holding the handpiece at approximately a 45 degree angle to the palatal surface. Step 2. Stabilize the needle by applying pressure from a cotton applicator. It's best to use a wooden handle cotton applicator so that adequate pressure can be applied. The applicator absorbs any excess anesthetic and makes for a more comfortable needle entry. Step 3. You will now initiate cruise control by depressing the foot pedal and counting three audible beeps. After the third beep, the STA system will announce the word cruise. Upon hearing this announcement, remove your foot from the top of the foot control pedal. You will find that the STA system will continue to beep, indicating anesthetic solution is continuing to flow. The technique of allowing anesthetic to contact and diffuse through the outer layers of tissue will produce a topical anesthetic effect, numbing the surface. Do not allow the needle to puncture the tissue at this time. Continue to allow the needle to stay on the surface for another four beeps before initiating needle penetration. Step four, rotate the handpiece back and forth with slight forward movement to allow a shallow puncturing of the tissue to a depth of one to two millimeters. Then stop forward movement and allow the STA system to continue to deposit anesthetic for an additional four beeps before any further penetration of the tissue. You have just performed what Milestone calls the pre-puncture technique. Step five, continue to very slowly penetrate the palatal tissue with a gentle back and forth rotational movement while simultaneously advancing another one to two millimeters before pausing. It should take anywhere between six to eight seconds to reach bone depending on the thickness of the palatal tissue. Step six, maintain the needle bevel against the surface of bone once it's contacted. You should begin to notice distinct blanching of the palatal tissue as an effect of the vasoconstrictor in the local anesthetic. This is normal. When you have delivered the required dosage, you can remove the needle. To avoid anesthetic solution spray back into your patient's mouth, perform the following while the needle is still embedded in the patient's tissue. Depress and release the foot control pedal. Count three beeps upon releasing the pedal and then totally remove the needle within the patient's mouth. Direct the needle away from the patient as a small amount of anesthetic solution may still be present. We will now show a clinical example of the AMSA injection being performed. Observe that the needle tip is applied to the surface of the palate. This is then followed by the placement of the cotton applicator to the needle tip. Firm pressure is applied with the cotton applicator. Once the needle is stabilized, the flow of anesthetic is begun by initiating the cruise control. Observe the birotational insertional technique, allowing the needle to penetrate the surface by 1 to 2 millimeters, followed by a lack of forward movement for an additional 4 to 5 beeps before advancing again. Next, simultaneously advance the needle an additional 1 to 2 millimeters while rotating back and forth which is subsequently followed by a pause in forward movement. You note distinct blanching occurring to the palatal tissue, 
representing the effect of the vasoconstrictor within the tissues. This is normal and to be expected. All movements must be performed very slowly and gently. Do not move the needle more than one to two millimeters forward each time. Rapid movements are contraindicated. As the anesthetic solution is delivered, you will notice diffuse blanching of the tissue. Once the suggested volume of anesthetic solution is dispensed, the needle can be removed. Observe the needle removal technique. First, to press and release the foot control pedal. Count three beeps after releasing the foot control and then remove the needle from your patient's mouth. Note the total lack of anesthetic sprayback upon needle removal. The needle is immediately directed away from the patient as a small amount of anesthetic solution may still be present. Distinct blanching will be noted throughout the palatal tissue on the side of the injection. It is the sole responsibility of each practitioner to identify, select, and administer the proper drug and volume for a given patient. The following information serves as a suggestion and not meant as definitive guidelines for any specific patient. The suggested drug and volume for the AMSA injection is 2% xylocaine HCL, one part per 100,000, epinephrine. A drug volume of 3 quarters to 1 cartridge is suggested when performing the AMSA injection. If you elect to use a 4% concentrated local anesthetic drug, such as 4% articaine HCL, use half the dosage previously suggested and use caution when using these medications. Please refer to an appropriate textbook reference source for guidance and recommendation pertaining to local anesthetic solutions and specific volumes. The AMSA injection is very useful for those dental procedures performed in the maxilla. It effectively provides profound soft tissue and pulpal anesthesia of multiple maxillary teeth from a single injection without producing collateral anesthesia to the lips and face, thus allowing greater post-treatment comfort. Additionally, those procedures that require a more accurate assessment of the patient's smile line during treatment, such as aesthetic restorative dentistry, can be accomplished with this maxillary injection technique with no collateral anesthesia.